Okay, so we have seen how how one can solve second order differential equations which are linear and which have constant coefficients. We solved the homogeneous version and then we looked at the inhomogeneous uh, equation. So in this lecture, we will look at a clever way of solving you know the same class of equations, but suppose we have forgotten about these methods, right? So there is a way to just solve uh, a second order differential equation simply from the knowledge of first order differential equations. So it's a, it ends up being two first order differential equations, right? So provided you are you know working with linear differential equations, you know there is this prescription available. So let's look at this clever approach in this lecture. Okay, so we are given you know this general equation d minus a times d minus b times y is equal to f of x, right? So you know the you know our discussion started with you know putting f of x to be zero. We look at the homogeneous version from where we write down the solution for the homogeneous differential equation, and then we have to find a particular solution, right? We were looking at how you know there are methods to solve to find to find the particular solution and so on, right? Then we of course if we can do this, then uh, we have the solution. So here we look at you know this differential equation d minus a times d minus b acting on y is equal to f of x as as a two step process so suppose u is equal to d minus b acting on y so this is a first order operation acting on y is equal to u and then so you see that d minus a times u is equal to f of x is a first order differential equation right so u is unknown and f of x is known a is just a constant so in fact we should be able to solve for this u right so because this is nothing but du by dx minus a u is equal to f of x so this is a first order differential equation we have the prescription we know how to find the integrating factor multiply throughout by the integrating factor then you have an exact differential equation so you write the left hand side as a total derivative and then you just integrate and then you at least you have a formal solution for this right so suppose you manage to find this formal solution, right? Well, I mean, it, it will depend on this function f of x, how reasonable the function it is and so on. The details, you know, one has to, there may be struggle involved, but at least there is a principle, you know, a, a prescription available for your, for this problem. And uh, so that's what we're describing. So suppose you manage to find the solution u of x because it's a first order differential equation. And then we, plug this back into our definition of u. So, but what is u? u is d minus b acting on y. y is an unknown. So, we have dy by dx minus b y is equal to u of x. So, in fact, we can think of this u of x itself as like a forcing function for another first order differential equation, right? So, if we can solve this first order differential equation as well. So, not only you know, do, would we like f of x to be a reasonable function, but it should yield for us another reasonable function u of x, such that this equation also, you know, if we can integrate it out, and finally we will have a, a solution y, which will have two, uh, you know, free constants, right? Because the first first order equation will give us one free constant, and then when we integrate a second time, that's going to give us another free constant. So there will be two uh, free constants, which is characteristic of you know, second order linear differential equation, right? So let, let's look at an example to illustrate how this works out. So suppose we want to solve this differential equation, d squared y by dx squared plus dy by dx minus 2y is equal to e to the x, right? We know how to, how to solve this equation by, you know, the other method we have already described. We would find the homogeneous equation, for, find its two roots, write down the complementary function, then look for a particular solution for this right so first we based on the complementary function we can you know make the right on zots for the particular solution find the you know coefficient method of coefficients uh, undetermined coefficients we plugged it in plug it in and extract the coefficients we find the find a particular solution and then we just simply add add it to the complementary function but here let's do it by the direct method that we just described so we have d plus 2 times d minus 1 times y is equal to e to the x, right? So here, well, we could have, you know, factorized in either way, could have thought of it as d minus 1 times d plus 2 times y equal to e to the x, which is, which I will leave it to you as homework to work it out in the other direction. 
So by the way, I mean you see that the roots here are minus 2 and 1. So probably you would run into difficulties if you try an onsorts of the form e to the x. You'll have to try x times e to the x, right? So this is if you were doing it by the other way, which is to find a particular solution. But anyway, all of that is bypassed here in this approach. So we have d plus 2 times d minus 1 times y is equal to e to the x. So we define u is equal to d minus 1 times y. And so we must solve the differential equation d plus 2 acting on u is equal to e to the x. So that is du by dx plus 2 times u is equal to e to the x. So we have to multiply throughout by this integrating factor which is e to the integral uh, um, it's, it's just 2x in this case. Integral of 2dx will be 2, uh, 2x. So you have to multiply throughout with e to the 2x and we have e to the 2x times du by dx. You know there would be some constant which doesn't matter. So uh, we have e to the 2x times du by d, dx plus 2u e to the 2x plus is equal to e to the 3x which is the same as saying the total derivative of the function e to the 2x times u as you can verify here is equal to e to the 3x. Now it's simply a matter of integrating both sides which yields for us e to the 2x times u is equal to e to the 3x by 3 plus some constant. So we get the first free constant here. Now we are only halfway through right. So we have to solve the other first order differential equation which is which is the definition of u, u is equal to d minus 1 acting on y. So which y is the unknown, so u is equal to d minus 1 times y and uh, but u is, is from, from here we have already solved for u which is e to the x divided by 3 plus c1 times e to the minus 2x. So this is the second differential equation that we must solve, first order linear differential equation. So we have dy by dx minus y is equal to e to the x by 3 plus c1 times e to the minus 2x. We know how to solve this. Again, we have to integrate, find the integrating factor. So, which in this case is just e to the minus x multiply throughout with e to the minus x. So, we have, uh, you know, the right hand side simplifies. We have e to the x into the e to the minus x will become just 1 over 3 plus c1 times e to the minus 3x. Now, the left hand side can be written as a total derivative. It's d by dx of e to the minus xy is equal to 1 third plus c1 times e to the minus 3x, integrate both sides, we get e to the minus x times y is equal to x by 3 minus c1 by 3 times e to the minus 3x plus another co free constant c2. So the full solution of the general equation now we are able to write down as y is equal to x over 3 times e to the x, right, we divide throughout by e to the minus x, so we get e to the x here and minus c1 by 3 e to the minus 2x uh, plus c2 times e to the x, so which is a full solution, right. So now looking at this full general solution, we can actually, you know, see how we would have perhaps got the same answer if we had used the other method, right. So we see that yp is equal to x over 3 times e to the x is in fact, you know, the particular solution, it's a particular solution. And then, you know, this minus c1 by 3 doesn't matter, right? we could have just called this minus c1 by 3 as some constant c1 e to the minus 2x and e to the x, right. These are the, uh, you know, two solutions of your homogeneous differential equation, which we could have directly got from here, d plus 2 into d minus 1. So the roots would be minus 2 and plus 1. So the solutions would be e to the minus 2x and e to the x, right. So which is uh, what we see here. So there is x by 3 times e to the x, which is a particular solution, plus some constant times e to the minus 2x plus another free constant times e to the x, right. So we have seen how there is this alternate method which we could, you know, adopt brute force for a second order differential equation and then solve two consecutive first order differential equations and get to the answer. That's all for this lecture. Thank you.